Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here at the Big Data Sports SV event. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, joined with Jeff Kelly. And the next guest is from the San Francisco 49ers, the general manager of stadium experience, Doug Garland. Doug, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, you're a CUBE alumni. You were early on in theCUBE back in the old Cloudera days when we came in for a special news broadcast. I was, uh, I remember that. And uh, now Cloudera recently in the news for raising $900 million in a round of funding. Pretty, pretty amazing there. So the tech, Technology swing in Silicon Valley, which you've been a big part of in your career now with the Niners, has been pretty amazing over the past decade. Um, but come on, the Niners, Jim Harbaugh, a little controversy in the office, uh, but winning, winning attitude, winning organization, new stadium. Um, tell us about what's going on over there, obviously, in terms of the culture, the innovation, and the stadium's at the center of all the action right now. It because is. That's going to dictate everything going forward, new stadium, new experiences, and probably new new revenue sources, et cetera. So dig into it. What's going on with the stadium? Uh, so, uh, yeah, you would mentioned everything going on with the team right now. And, you know, what I'd say is, first of all, the 49ers have a tradition of winning, certainly. And uh, when the 49ers think about winning, they want to win on the field and they want to win off the field. And we've been fortunate to be winning on the field recently, uh, going to the NFC Championships, Coach Harbaugh in, uh, and this is all transpiring with Jed York taking over as CEO of the 49ers. Um, and uh, for a long time, the 49ers have wanted to get a new stadium. Candlestick has been a wonderful home for many years, but it was a little long in the tooth. And it was really time for a new stadium uh, as a home for our team and a place for our fans to come and have a great time. Uh, and we were fortunate to be able to find a great location in the city of Santa Clara, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Now, when uh, I'm relatively new to the world of professional sports uh, in terms of working in it, um, not as a fan, obviously, I've been a fan forever. But what I've learned is that when owners come in and there's a new stadium that they're building, they think a lot about what should the hallmark be of that stadium. Everybody wants it to be architecturally interesting, but what's going to be the hallmark of that stadium? We saw the Dallas Cowboys stadium go up, kind of everything's big. They got a big TV, among other things. When Jed and the management team of the 49ers, Parag Marathe, our COO, uh, now team president, then COO, now team president, were taking a step back and saying, what should our stadium stand for? Well, it doesn't take too long to say, we're in the heart of Silicon Valley. What we should stand for uh, is bringing forward all the innovation of Silicon Valley into the hands of our fans so that they can have a great experience. And that's really what the new stadium's all about. So on the technology choices you guys have, I mean, it's, I mean the construction takes center staging. We saw it getting built and all the seats are in and they're filling in all the gaps and making it look beautiful, beautiful, beautifying and everything. So what is the core vision around the technology? What is the innovation strategy for the fan experience? Is it better videos, better bandwidth? Where is this, where's the centerpiece on, on the stretch? Start with the bandwidth and the Wi-Fi? Is it the concessions? Is it uh, Taking so, selfies, what, what's yeah, the thing? Taking selfies, absolutely. I mean, of so, course, you gotta take short, a, time know, for the, a selfie. The short answer is yes to all of that. Uh, so when we think about the uh, stadium and constructing a big experience, it was mentioned earlier, we do think about the competition from the couch. When you're a fan and you're thinking about going to the game, you want to go to that stadium because you're there with your friends, you see the live action on the field, there's nothing like the energy you get from being part of that crowd. But you know there's going to be heavy traffic, you know there's going to be lines, not just to get in, but to get food. You know a lot of that color commentary, particularly around football, that you've begun to enjoy on TV, you're going to miss. So it's kind of a trade-off, because you can look at that comfortable couch with those wonderful replays and the food right around the corner that you don't have to wait in line for. So we think about that. We want it to be less of a trade-off. We want you to come into the game and not have to make that trade-off. So how are we going to do it? Well, you can take a step back and think about how to deliver it. But it doesn't take a genius to say, well, wait a minute. What's really going on in terms of consumer technology today? What do we hear all the time? Mobile first. So we know the fans coming to our game are going to be carrying smart devices. And we know that they're accustomed to being able to uh, order food on their mobile devices or consume content on their mobile devices. So what we wanted to do was construct a stadium that would support that. Now, what does that start with? Well, if you're going to have mobile device, you better have great wireless coverage. So we're going to have great wireless coverage. 
Certainly like every stadium, we're working with the cellular carriers to have great wireless coverage, but we're putting into place uh, a network, including Wi-Fi, that we think will bring an unprecedented level of coverage in the stadium. You feel confident about that? Yeah, we feel very confident about it. I mean, that's a hard problem. We heard from Bill here in the Niners. It took him a long time to get it right. You guys all in on that? It's all hands on deck? Yeah, it's, well, very much so. And so what we've done is uh, we think we have uh, deployed access points in the stadium in a new way that's not typically done. Uh, and we're working with our Wi-Fi partner, Aruba, to make sure that we get this system up and tuned. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the early days in cellular. So I spent uh, 10 years in cellular in the 90s. And some of what we talk about with regard to frequency planning and thinking about capacity versus coverage trade-off and creative antenna deployments, that's what we're doing at Levi Stadium. So we're going to get that wireless coverage right. Now, like every wireless system, it's going to require some tuning when we launch. No question about that. We're going to do the best job we can but wireless systems will alter their behavior. But Wi-Fi, wi wi-Fi will be Wi-Fi will be unlicensed. That's the 2.4. Yeah. Then you're going to overlay, and the 5 gig. And the 5 gig. But then you're going to overlay spectrum on top of that license spectrum with the what the carrier. With the cellular. Yeah. Okay. But we're going to really be re uh, we'll rely on Wi-Fi. Uh, and what, one of the things that we're relying on is you mentioned 2.4 gig. But most devices coming out now will also operate in the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Now, why is that important? One of the reasons it's important is because when you think about wireless, you can think about channels that mobile devices can use. In 2.4 gigahertz, there are basically, basically three non-overlapping channels that you can use. You add up to about 20 more uh, when you go to 5 gig. So one of the reasons why we're optimistic about Wi-Fi working is we're coming along at the right time. There's more spectrum and there's more devices that can take advantage of that spectrum. Now, you, when you talk to the management, and I know you talk to other clubs as part of your uh, collaboration, what are the things that you're hearing for use cases that are innovative about that, that people might not know about at home about, I didn't know I could do that at the stadium, or I, could, I didn't know I could do that when I, my relationship with the club, whether they're a fan or season ticket holder or a one game a year uh, fan? Well, so I mentioned a little bit about that competition with the couch, but you can think about what, what we're going to do. Let me tell you what we're going to do. Um, what we're going to enable a fan to do is Enjoy that game on the field by bringing them information about what's going on. One thing that's very important in football, replays. Fans want replays. So what we're going to allow fans to do who are in the venue is to watch instant replays after every play on demand. We'll get them to you fast. We'll get them to you in under five seconds. It's one thing when you talk about instant replays if you're sitting at home or you're getting them on the web. But if you're at the game, if I can't get them to you fast, it doesn't work. And that has to be under five seconds. So you're going to do that. What else are we going to do? Uh, one of the other areas that we know is a big hassle for fans at the game is waiting in line at concession stands. You, when you go to a football game, if you get hungry, you're smiling. Uh, if you get hungry, you're trying to figure out which part of which quarter do I have to miss so I can go get that hot dog. You know, that's a trade-off we don't want our fans to make. So what we're going to enable at Levi's Stadium is the ability for any fan sitting in any section of the stadium to order food and beverage to their seat using their mobile device. Uh, so uh, what's different about what we're doing is the sheer scale of what we're attempting to do. Um, we got some Twitter questions in here instantly coming back, even on controversial calls. Yeah, you'll get replays. On every call. Uh, you'll get replays after every play. Now. Under review plays? What's that? Even if they're under review? You get replays on every We're play. We're holding it to you. Yeah. Nice. Now, by the way, what I'm talking about is what you're going to see on your mobile device. What you see up on the big screen may be different. But you'll get every play. So, uh, yes, what you'll get the, that. What does the coach get? The What's special, that? The real play. The coach get, he gets a special angle. Yeah. So Harbaugh with the pen around his neck. Was he going to have a, uh, a PDA around his neck and the little iPhone? <laughs> so, so to all that, you know, being completely wireless, having uh, each fan's got their own smart device, you're going to have replays, you're going to be ordering food. Yeah. That means a lot of data is going to be created about their behavior, what they're doing, when they're doing it. Uh, what role will that play in, in, in uh, kind of monitoring and analyzing how the different services you all are working? Um, do you have plans to kind of really analyze that data to see what's working, what's not working, to make adjustments, yes. uh, and, and, and how will you go about that? Yeah, very much so. So what we are creating is a Fan360 platform for the team. 
Um, this Fan 360 platform will not only collect data to allow us to improve experiences in venue, but also uh, we're going to bring in data sources that are outside the venue as well so that we can get a complete picture of the fan, hence Fan 360. Um, one of the things we, uh, we know when we launch is that while we think we're going to have a lot of stuff right, we're pretty sure we don't have it all right, and we're going to learn. Uh, and so what we want to be able to do is harness all that data, see what's working, see what isn't working. Um, it could mean that when we take a look at the kinds of plays that our fans in the stadium are looking at at replays, might change what our editorial calendar uh, looks like. Um, certainly, based on what we see from a food and beverage standpoint, in-seat and express pickup, which will also enable, uh, we're going to change our staffing plans. And by the way, one of the things that I should say is that while we're leveraging technology, this, particularly when it comes to concessions, this is as much about operations and logistics as it is technology. The two have to come together, and we'll use data optimized there. Well, it's people, process, and technology, right? It's not just, just not just the technology. Yeah. And you've got to make those kind of the business decisions about where to apply the technology and, and where, you know, the technology might tell you one thing, but you've got to kind of uh, take into consideration you know, your business objectives yes. as well. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, what we're all about is providing a great fan experience, but ultimately, what we hope the great fan experience translates into is a better business for the 49ers organization. Doug, what's your vision for fan experience? I know you and I have talked kind of off camera, but I want you to share with the folks, what's your vision, what's the collective organization's vision? It's probably obviously all line, lined up, otherwise you wouldn't be working there, but this is a new era. It's, it's a combination of bleeding edge, but you, you can't fail because you have to deliver a fan experience. What's your vision? How are you going to go out and deliver those, those services? Um, so what we want to do is, uh, the way we think about it right now, is we think more gain, less hassle. So uh, when you talk about what we're trying to create, people go to the game. We want them to engage in the game, uh, and we want them to get more information that will help them get emotionally invested in the game. And so in what we're creating from a fan experience, it's why we're doing replays, We'll also bring in information that's relevant to what's happening on Can the Can you field. pipe in sound noise to beat the Seahawks? <laughs> I mean, that's yes. some technology. Some speakers under every seat, you know. You know get... <laughs> yeah, we've thought about that, actually, <laughs> believe it or not. We've thought about doing things like monitoring which section cheers the loudest and trying to get some competition going. So uh, we've certainly <laughs> thought about that. But what we want to do is we want to get fans to get more game, and we want them watching the field. We don't want them on the phone all the time, but every now and then if I'm talking with you and a great play just happened, I'm going to miss it. We want you to be able to go back and do it. The other thing we want you to feel is less hassle. You don't have to wait in line to get hot dogs. We'll give you some help in terms of getting to the game and navigating through parking. And by the way, if you got to go, we'll let you know if there are long lines, short lines, or medium lines at the restrooms out there so that you can get up and go. That's going to be a very popular service. That's Just make sure no Google Glass allowed in the restroom. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what we think. So we think that's going to be a very popular feature. Okay, so i got to ask you, what's been the most exciting thing that you've seen in your job so far um, that's, that kind of surprised you, something that you didn't expect that, was, that, that kind of knocked you off your chair saying, wow, I wouldn't have expected that kind of enablement from technology to make that scenario happen. Do you have an example? Of um, oh, I, I just got to tell you, I, I think there's a couple things. Um, one, in some of our testing, when we're getting those replays as fast as we can get them, uh, it's so much fun to see that come up. I've hosted friends at games with our trial app, and they just can't believe it. But the coolest reaction I've gotten uh, actually had to do with in-seat delivery of food and beverage. I had a very good friend out from New York, and he was hungry, and we were sitting together in the stands, and I said, go ahead and order your food. And he did, and he ordered it, went off, 20 seconds later, there was a 60-yard touchdown play. And he turned to me and he said, I would have missed that if I'd gotten up to get that hot dog. And he literally grabbed me and he said, this is going to be huge. <laughs> and that was very cool. <laughs> The future's plastics. Yeah, um, exactly. It's that kind of moment where yeah, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about how big any IT department you guys have there. Is the new stadium going to house the offices as well? Is that going to be an IT data center there? Can you any, share any specifics? Yeah, so when you look at what we're building in the stadium, we're going to have data centers. We'll have network rooms all around. There's major, major technology going into the stadium to enable all this. Uh, so 
Uh, there's also going to be a fully functioning TV stand, uh, studio as well. Comcast is going to come in and do their games there. Uh, or, you know, do their reporting for the games. Maybe we'll have the Cube down there. Yeah, yes. Uh, and the Cube. So, the Sports Vertical is opening up as of tonight, yeah, so there it so, goes. So uh, there'll be this fully functioning uh, studio as well. So, you know, when you walk around the stadium, most fans will see the luxury areas, the concession yeah. stands and all that, but behind closed doors, there's going to be server farm after server farm after server farm. Dave at the Earthquakes has the biggest bar in history. Can you top that? Yeah, we're going to have a roof deck. Uh, so uh, we actually will have a roof deck. So um, you will. Yeah, we really will. There'll be a roof deck. We're going to grow grass up there. It's going to be our whole. Yeah, it's going to be. So, gonna so be I got to say, I saw I saw the um, the owner speak at an event, SAP Sapphire last year. He said. Um, why pay sixty billion dollars, whatever, sixty million dollars for a scoreboard when the fans bring their own scoreboard to the game? Yeah. And so his attitude was very interesting. It's like, hey, I don't need to go over the top like Jerry Jones in Dallas did with his AT and AT and T Stadium now, um, which might be obsolete in a couple of years or yeah. a year. When I'd rather optimize for the fan experience in their hands. So that is compelling. So drill down on that. So what, basically, this is what Jed, Jed will often talk about numbers like this. Uh, so the, the reported number, and I'm, I'm getting this secondhand, I don't know for sure, but was that the Cowboys spent $70 million on that great big TV that they put in the middle of the stadium. Now... The one that ball hits when the, when the yeah, punters... Yeah, when you punt. Yeah, yeah. okay. Now, yeah. like any equipment <laughs> you install in the stadium, that can be outdated at some point. Um, if you look at our fans... Capacity of our stadium is about 70,000. Now, you look in the Bay Area, about every year and a half, uh, people here spend about $1,000 on mobile devices. iPads, mobile equipment, all that stuff. You do the math on that, assuming every fan has a mobile device, so a little bit of license there, but 70,000 times 1,000 bucks, that's $70 million. So our fans are investing $70 million in hardware every year and a half. The Cowboys did it once. With that, uh, with that TV. So what we're counting on is we're counting on the fans to bring the hardware they need. We're looking to ride that consumer electronics curve. Instead, what we're doing is we're building a software platform to deliver services to those devices. That's what we're doing. Well, it's, it's a really interesting point because you've got to be able to stay nimble. Yes. You've got to be able to adapt to the new things that consumers, in your case fans, want and how they want to consume it. So. Maybe expand on that. So one is to basically deliver the services on the devices they want to use. Uh, but what are some other ways that you, you're, you're trying to maintain some level of flexibility? I mean, you're building a you know a brick and steel building. Yes. You can't change that. But what can you? How do you stay flexible and adaptable? Well, so that's a great question. So what we're doing, you know, the the, the application and the mobile devices, you know, that's the hero. That's what you hear about a lot. But what we're doing really to maintain this flexibility and to build things out is we're building a platform that integrates all the systems in the stadium, from access and ticketing, to point of sale devices, to content creation and distribution, others in the future. We build APIs into those platforms. That goes into our platform, and that platform does two things. It exposes functionality to mobile applications in a clean, modern way, uh, and creates data for the enterprise in order to more effectively manage the operation. So as, we, as new capabilities come into the stadium or as we think about new services, we might bring in some new equipment. Uh, that isn't going to change what's already operating. That will integrate into the back end and we'll already have the capability to uh, take the mobile application and, uh, and extend it through that API as well as capture the data. So think about it like a platform, a platform that abstracts away all those differences. Yeah, so one other thing I wanted to go back to, you mentioned you know, getting that 360 degree view of the fan. Yes. Uh, you know, in, 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 the, 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 in the enterprise world, you know, beyond sports, companies have been trying to get a 360 degree view of their customers for ages. That's, yes. That's a, the age old problem. Can you give some advice to you know, your, your counterparts in other fields out there who are, who are struggling with that. They've got you know, data sources coming in, new data sources coming online, they've got siloed data sources. How do you go about actually making that a reality? And is that, is that more than just a technical question? Uh, well, I, I, actually, I think there's probably a couple uh, different parts. I think that you, you're right. There are plenty of enterprises that have tried to get that customer 360. Uh, and um, 
you know, what I tell you is that, once again, I feel like we're coming along at the right time. There's a lot of data technology that's out there now today, a lot of it available on, based on open source uh, platforms that we're taking advantage of to collate all this data. Uh, and so I feel like we're kind of coming along at the right time. Uh, and we're coming along at a time when I think professional sports executives are a lot more data minded now. They want... And real time. And real time, yeah. So they're, they're a lot more mindful of that right now. So we have this willing appetite to both invest and consume in this data. I think what we really haven't seen yet, though, uh, is just how this data is going to be harnessed and used across the enterprise. One of the things that I hear when I talk to team executives, not just at the 49ers, but other teams, is that they really want to use big data. They really want the Fan360, but they're not I'm not sure what they're going to do with it quite yet. So I think we still have a lot to learn. So Doug, let's talk about um, old technology. Bill Belichick would go in the stands with his camera. Yeah. It's uh, the henchman, Spygate, well documented. What's to keep you guys from installing secret cameras uh, in, the ca in the stadium? Is there regular NFL all over this? Is there restrictions from the NFL around camera usage because of the Spygate situation? Um, I couldn't recite all of them, but I know that one of the things that the NFL does, like every other league, is try to maintain that kind of competitive parity and make sure that that kind of thing isn't happening. So you're going to be so, talking like this the whole time? Hey, yeah, well, that's why cube, they do this, know. yeah. <laughs> so not sure I could comment other than the NFL seems to be pretty on top of that. So you guys, you guys kind of watch that, but technically you could install some magical cameras and <laughs> figure that out, zoom in on the playbook. But now they have all kinds of different signs and I can't, icons. Uh, I can't confirm or deny. Doug, yeah, thanks yeah. for coming on the queue. I'll give you the final word. Vision for the future. What's your take on it? You know, Gideon, you ex Facebook. Uh, Jed is a very young guy, smart, young organization. Obviously, the winning attitude you're seeing from Jim Harbaugh all through the organization. John Paul, another uh, friend working with you on this amazing project. Um, you guys get technology. Yes. The future's bright. Um, what do you what's what's your what, what do you think is going to happen? What, what's your what, what's your prediction? Not to say what specifically, but what's the future going to look like in five years from now for the Niners? What do you see the world unfolding into? Well, clearly, I see us winning on the team, uh, winning on the field with the great team that we have. You know, um, we talked a little bit about big data. Prague Marate, our COO, harnesses that big data all the time, uh, and so things like time in the pocket, things like. Uh, one of the one of the uh, statistically significant uh, success factors of teams is less turnover. It's why you see us working so hard to re-sign players and coaches who are already with the team because it's been statistically proven that that produces winners. So we're already harnessing that data. Now what you're seeing the team do is harness technology to create a great fan experience. I think there's going to be something we do at Levi's that's going to be like that Diamond Vision screen out here. I was talking with uh, Peter Uberoff. Uh, ex-commissioner of Major League Baseball, well-known business guy, head of the uh, 1984 LA Olympics. And as I was telling him about what we're doing at Levi's Stadium, he said, you know, I can't say that I'm a huge user of mobile, but I do know this. It sounds an awful lot like when we were putting in the first Diamond Vision screen at Dodger Stadium. Everybody looked at it and said, man, it looks like you guys are going to a lot of effort to put that in a lot of money. Are you sure the fans really need it? And after the first season, Every stadium said, we got to have one of those. So that's what we hope. Got to have one of those. And again, got to make better play calling on the one yard line. Harbaugh, if you're watching, you know, we love you. <laughs> Please punch it in next time. Uh, Doug, seriously, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Special broadcast. It's been a special broadcast of theCUBE here live at AT&T Park for Big Data and Sports, Sports Data SV. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's it for here. And that's a wrap here at AT&T Park. Thanks for watching.